for those um, that haven't felt peak performance or, or don't think that they've felt it, what, what does peak performance look and feel like, um, do you think, or from your point of view? So it's tricky because I think sometimes people often think that peak performance feels like flow and flow may or may not be a peak performance. And so to me, peak performance is really about those kind of unique circumstances in which you express your full potential in the context of a competitive event, right? You do something that you've just never done before at a really, really high level, and you sort of establish a new PR that you're now constantly trying to replicate. So sometimes that can feel like flow, right? It can feel like being fully immersed in the situation, being incredibly responsive, losing track of time. Things feel almost like effortless, even though they're effortful. Um, but it can also feel really hard, right? It can feel like a grind. It can feel like wishing things would just be over. What's your philosophy in yeah, educating athletes that um, struggle to sort of move on after making a mistake in a game? So I think it's, it's actually, I, I see the two as pretty linked, which is I think people often feel difficulty moving on from a mistake in the game when they don't have a great system for managing the mistake afterward. And so if you, if you don't have a way that you're going to process these mistakes that you've made in the game, which by the way, like is happening at every level of sport, right? Like the best NBA shooters are shooting 40% from three, right? So 60% yeah. of the time there's a, a mistake, right? Or there's not the optimal outcome. And so I think the best players create a system for themselves to process that mistake at the right time, right? Which is usually, honestly, not in the moment, right? So if mm. you're in the middle of a soccer game, let's say, and you miss a pass or you overshoot it or you miss a wide open net, it's probably not the time to be wondering, well, next time maybe I'll lean a little bit forward or, oh gosh, I wonder if I would have done it this way. How would that have turned out? How do you find what are some sort of important habits or practices, if you like, to help you know, with concentration? Yeah, I mean, I think the foundational practice here is mindfulness practice. You know, we know regular mindfulness training can improve concentration, can improve focus. Um, and so a simple place to start is just five minutes a day, right, of focusing on your breath and really sustaining that attention as you get distracted coming back and returning the focus to the breath. And that that act of being distracted and coming back to the moment can actually help strengthen your ability to be present. Um, so I think that's a, a really simple starting point, but there are other kind of creative things you can do to help direct your attention. So the other really simple intervention I love is it's called WIN. It stands for what's important now. It's just when you find yourself kind of out of the moment, one simple way to bring your attention back is to just ask yourself what's important now. And the answer to that question should help you lock in and redirect your attention to whatever you need to be focusing on. And so, you know, I think mindfulness is great for sustaining that kind of practice over time. How can we help to um, yeah, help athletes achieve their optimal and peak performance? Yeah, I think coaches and support staff, I mean, a part of your role is to create one, create a high performance environment, right? So create an environment where people feel like they can express themselves, uh, create an environment where people's autonomy is supported, right? And they're encouraged and given choice uh, emphasize things like competence and mastery, sort of emphasizing development and progress and growth, focusing on things like how connected people feel, the cohesion of the team, right? These are all principles from self-determination theory, but they're also things that increase intrinsic motivation and enhance performance. So I think, you know, rule number one or priority one for coaches and support staff is essentially creating a context where high performance can emerge, right? So, you know, if you look at elite levels of sport, Olympians, for example, the primary stressor Olympians identify that undermines their peak performance is actually an organizational issue. Perhaps coaches are listening in, they're looking after a community, local team, uh, don't have access to a sports psych. Is there apps out there or websites that resources that people should be aware of? Yeah, there's a, um, you know, Headspace is a great app um, for teaching mindfulness. Calm is fine too. There's some great websites out there. Believe Perform is run by um, a guy named Chris Sham. Sam Brook, who's a really talented sports psychologist out in the UK. He's got some great resources. And there are some lovely books for coaches. You know, there's a book actually called Sports Psychology for Coaches that will walk you through the basics and how you can implement it. So I'd encourage, you know, using some of those resources. Um, but just, you know, plenty of, of free stuff exists out there to sort of promote peak performance for youth athletes. Those are just some of the starting points.